Hello guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Petra and in today's video I'm going to be talking about my favorite things to do, eat and drink in Porto, Portugal. In case you guys are new to my channel, last semester I was studying abroad in Porto, Portugal. I have spent in total of six months in Porto from February 2020 until July 2020 and even though I had to spend some time in lockdown, I still had a plenty of time to explore around and find some cool places. I would like to share these insights with you. So yeah, let's get right into it. First, let's start with the things to do. Porto as a city is pretty small. It has only around 214,000 inhabitants. Despite that, I never felt like I would be bored there, even though I'm a big city girl, because my city has a population of 1 million, so I am used to living in a larger city than Porto. Porto definitely has a lot to offer and there are a lot of things that you can do there. First of all, there are the touristy things that you can do, such as the city center. So, for example, Rua de Santa Catarina, Aliados, Sao Bento Station, the square with the rectorate of the University of Porto, the Clerigos Tower, I have been on top of there and it was really nice, I would recommend. The Flower Street, which is the most expensive street in Porto, and Ponte Luis, and the list goes on and on and on. Majestic Cafe. Majestic Cafe is a cafe where J.K. Rowling wrote the first Harry Potter book. It is lesser known, but J.K. Rowling actually used to live in Porto for some time. Also in Porto you can spot university students wearing this uniform, which looks exactly like from Harry Potter. And it is a uniform that you have to earn the right to wear. Not everybody gets to wear this uniform. And it is like a kind of a student club from what I understood about it and uh, if you join it then you have to just like do certain tasks so that you earn the right to wear the uniform. So this definitely was also a source of inspiration for JK Rowling. There is also this library or bookshop called Livraria Leo. It is also believed that this library or bookshop has inspired JK Rowling when creating Harry Potter. However, later on she tweeted that it's not true and that she has never been there. However, it seems to be a very cool place. If you guys happen to go there, just send me a picture because I have never been. Of course, you cannot leave Porto without going to the beach. There are two main beach areas where we would normally go to, which is Posh and Matosinhos. What is really nice about them is that they are not really far from each other, so you can easily walk from one to another, which is a really nice walk, so I would recommend you guys trying this out. Another beautiful walk is walking from the city center to Foch. That's what I would typically do during the quarantine. It is around six kilometers. However, if you guys don't feel like walking there, you guys can take a bus 500 from Sao Bento, and this bus goes the exact route that I would walk. Apart from beaches in Foch and Matosinhos, there are also other cool beaches where you can go. You guys can take a train to Miramar, where is this iconic beach with a church right next to the sea. When I was going there with my friend for the first time, we actually ended up taking a wrong train and we ended up getting off at the station that was like two stations past the stop where we were supposed to get off and we ended up having to walk 3.6 kilometers back to the Miramar beach and even though it sounds like it probably sucked, it was really nice because we got to walk along the coast and it was such a beautiful walk. Also near Miramar there is this other beach called Espino. I have never been there but my friend has been and she said it's her favorite beach in Portugal so I think it might be worth checking it out. I have also visited beaches in Povod Vazim and Vila do Conde. Those are like little towns located really close to Porto. You guys can just take a regular metro to get there. Povod Varzim is a really cute place where you can just shop around, you can go to the beach. Also there is this really big casino if you guys are into that sort of thing. Vila do Conde is also a very lovely place. There are a lot of beaches, cafes, restaurants and there is this one particular restaurant that I think that you should definitely visit. I will tell you about it in a bit but I think Povod Varzim and Vila do Conde are definitely places worth visiting at least once. I personally really liked it there and I think going to Vila do Conde just to this restaurant that I'm going to be talking about later is really worth the trip. 
to be honest. Another one of my favorite activities in Porto is going to parks. There is this one particular park that I really liked called Jardim de Palacio Cristal, which is technically a garden because there are really nice flowers, there are also peacocks. It's really nicely taken care of. There is also this lookout with these cool palm trees, which could be a really nice photo location. So I think you guys should definitely visit. Let me start by highlighting three Portuguese dishes that you definitely must try. Codfish is one of the most typical Portuguese dishes and they prepare it in so many different ways. They actually have to import most of their codfish from Norway because it's not possible to catch it in Portugal. So it is funny that one of the most characteristic dishes of Portugal is imported from another country. Another typical Portuguese dish is called francesinha. It is kind of like a sandwich. Bread, egg, cheese, sausage, meat and it is all topped with this beer based sauce, kind of like gravy. So this is also what I would recommend trying. And lastly, Portugal is really famous for their pastry. The most famous one is probably pastel de nata. It is this cute yellow tart and the filling tastes kind of like vanilla pudding. So with that out of the way, let me now recommend to you my favorite places to eat in Porto. So let's start with the bakeries. You can find this bakery in the city center. There are two branches of this bakery, one near Rua de Santa Catarina and the other one is near Sao Bento. This bakery specializes in making pastel de nata, hence the name Fabrica Nata. Even though this place might seem like it's made to get a lot of money out of tourists, the pastel de natas are actually so good and it is really affordable. So I would highly recommend you checking this place out. The next bakery that I really liked is this one. I am not even going to attempt to pronounce it. I I think they make the best pastel de nata ever because I personally like when the filling is kind of liquid and the pastel de nata from this place is like that so that's why I really like this bakery. This is probably my most favorite bakery in Porto because it's a bakery where I would often go when I had a long break during school. It is located in Foch and what I really like to get there is their croissant. Portuguese croissants are really different from the French croissants. This bakery makes them slightly undercooked, so they are kind of gooey. So if you are into that sort of thing, definitely try that bakery. Another great bakery is near Matosinhos. It is called Perola do Atlantico. Their pastry looks so divine and it is so cheap. So I highly recommend going there if you are in the area. Moving on to restaurants. So for Portuguese food, I would highly, 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 highly recommend to you guys to try Os Eusebios or I don't know how to pronounce it in Portuguese but basically it's this restaurant in Villa do Conde as I promised you guys earlier in this video that I would talk about it it's the best restaurant ever. I would say it is a very fancy looking restaurant, but because it's located in Villa do Conde and not in Porto, the prices are not as high. So the prices that you would pay there are going to be what you would pay in a restaurant in Porto. They will look much worse than this restaurant. I would highly recommend you to try the Francesinha there. If you are ever going to try Francesinha, make sure it's in this restaurant. I think it's definitely worth the trip to Villa do Conde just to go here. And and even if you don't try any Portuguese food and you just order a steak, the steak is so good. I was there with my friends and we ordered this steak. I think it was steak on with some pepper sauce or something like that. It was so good. I would highly recommend you to get this steak. It was amazing. Also, if I don't move this hand, it's because it really hurts me. So if I just wave with one of my hands, it's because this one just hurts me. Okay, I'm sorry. All right. Another Portuguese restaurant that I would like to recommend to you is frango.com. Frango in Portuguese means chicken. And this is a restaurant that I would often order from on Glovo when I was hungry during the quarantine. There is something that they put into rice that makes it so tasty. I think it's because they put olives into the rice. They have this chicken with rice and french fries. That's what I would normally get. Or I would get fried fish with rice and french fries and it was also really good. I think they have different offers on Glovo and in person. I was there once in person. I kind of expected in real life to get the same thing that I would get on Glovo but 
that's not what happened. I think my experience was honestly better on Glovo. So that's it for the Portuguese food and now let's move on to the other foods as well. So you guys might know if you've been following me for a while that I have a friend in Porto who opened her own restaurant. It is a Korean restaurant called Sik Tak. I highly recommend you guys to check it out because Korean food is so good. I think it definitely should become more mainstream kind of like Japanese food or Indian food. Yeah, check it out if you like Asian food and you would like to try something different. Another restaurant that I really liked was Hong Kong Grand Palace. It is a Chinese restaurant and they make dim sum. Those are like dumplings, different kind of foods on small plates. I was really pleasantly surprised. My boyfriend is from Hong Kong and their national food is dim sum. So when he was satisfied with the restaurants, I think that you guys will be satisfied as well. Another restaurant that I wanted to highlight is called Tokyo Sushi. It is a restaurant where you pay 10 euros for all you can eat and there is sushi and there is also some fried Asian styled food they like noodles and other things. I think it's a nice place where you can eat a lot on a budget. However, if you are used to a great quality sushi, which I am really spoiled in this sense because my boyfriend really likes good quality sushi, so we always go to places where the sushi is really good. So you might not be satisfied in Tokyo sushi. However, you don't have to worry because in Porto there is this one restaurant where you could go and that place is called Ichiban. So Ichiban is located in Foch, in the rich people district. It is quite an expensive restaurant, I'm not gonna lie, but the sushi quality is really good and I think you get a lot of value out of your money. So I think if you like good sushi, then it's definitely worth visiting Ichiban. Lastly, another restaurant that I really liked is TGB Burger. I would say it's really affordable, the prices there are what you would normally pay for McDonald's. However, the quality is much better. And also every Thursdays they have a promotion where you can get one plus one burger free. That's why we would typically go there on Thursdays. So after you did all of these amazing things and ate all of this delicious food, there's only one thing left for you to do and that is to have something to drink. If you are a poor student and you don't have much money, you can either go to Adega, which is this student bar where the drinks are really cheap, or you can just get some drinks in Pingodos and take it somewhere like to Jardim de Moro or a beach. The world is your playground. My favorite affordable wines that you can get in grocery store are... This wine is definitely a must try. It is called JP. It is so cheap. It is like 279, but it's the best wine ever. There is both red and white and I believe there is rosé because I saw it online, but I don't think I have ever seen it in person. This wine is amazing. You guys have to try this. Some wines that are more expensive than JP taste worse than JP. So that's why you have to get JP. Another great affordable drink is Sangria. You can either get Don Simon or you can get some of the grocery store private brand ones because they are, I think, the same as Don Simon. My favorite sparkling wine, this one is around 3 to 4 euros per bottle. It is called Gazella. I personally like the rosé version more and it is basically Vino Verde. It is like a green wine. I am not really sure what this means. I think it's like a really young wine. It has a really refreshing taste, ideal for a hot summer night. And lastly, you can never go to Porto without trying some port wine. Port wine is really special because during the fermentation process, when they are turning the grapes into wine, they stop the fermentation process early by adding brandy to stop the fermentation and to preserve the sweet taste. So port wine is usually much stronger than regular wine because of the brandy and it is also really sweet. Port wine usually contains around 20% of alcohol which normal wine has around 13%. My favorite brand of port wine is Ferreira, that's what I would typically get, but to be honest, I didn't really try that many other brands, so I could be biased. I think you should definitely try red, white, they are both kind of different. You should definitely go to wine tasting if you are in Porto, for sure. About these student bars, so I already mentioned Adega. There are actually three Adegas in Porto, or maybe more, I'm not really sure. But there is Espaco Adega, Adega Leonor, and Adega Sports Bar. 
So I will give you some clarity about all the adegas because most people just say let's meet in adega and they don't say which adega. So I was always really confused because I typed adega into Google Maps and I found like free adegas so I was really confused. But basically the main adega that most people mean is adega Leonor which is located right next to Espaco Adega actually. Adega Leonor is this little bar located next to the rectorate of the University of Porto and so many students meet there, probably all of these students from the entire Porto meet there in the evening. Basically the way how it works is that you get your drinks in the bar and then you stand outside with the drink. So many students are outside with their drinks in front of Adega and uh, it is not really corona friendly right but that's what it was before the covid then eventually uh, there were some restrictions so right now i believe it's not what it used to be before when i was there the restrictions were still quite strict then there is the adega sports bar it has basically like four floors i think and you can do a lot of things there like play darts you can play beer pong you can do watch football I guess I don't know I have been there only once because of the COVID after that I kind of didn't have any opportunity to go there another great cafes slash bars that I would recommend to you guys are this bar is really cool because it's not really expensive and it has the best view of Ponte Luis it is not really fancy but it is a very nice place if you don't have that much money Another bar slash cafe that I would like to recommend to you guys is BASE. BASE is located close to the rectorate of the University of Porto and it is basically in a park. What is really cool is that during the day you can drink your coffee in the grass under the trees. But if you don't want to do that, there are also some regular seats as well. In Porto there are also some rooftop bars. One of the coolest one is Porto Cruise in Gaia. Also there are other rooftop bars. For example, there are some on the rooftops of malls. For example, La Vie Porto or Via Catalina Shopping. This bar is really great. It has a view of Douro River and it is located close to the Jardim de Palacio. Cristal. And lastly, I would like to highlight two bars in Foch. This one is really close to the beach, it is really nice and chill and the coffee there is not really expensive, however the drinks are pretty expensive, but it's well worth the money because it's a bar on the beach, right? And lastly, this pub, it is really close to the bar on the beach that I just talked about. It is not that expensive and it's a nice place to chill, I went there with my friend a couple of times. So guys, that's it for this video. If you like this, please support my channel by giving me a thumbs up. If you guys have ever been to Porto or if you are in Porto right now or if you are from Porto, please comment down below some of your favorite places or things to do. With that, I would like to wish you a nice day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!